One of the first ideas we had is like this guy was gonna be obsessed with having a bigger ass. I was like, in fact, a little like jealous. To be fair, there's something about sitting down with with a like with an actual bot that is uh, is very comfortable. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Diego Luna. My name is Gael Garcia Bernal, and Esquire has asked us to explain some things, so we're just gonna explain some things. Yeah. What is the secret to your long-lasting friendship? Wait, it's a secret. Ah, <laughs> then let, let me ask you one thing. Anything you guys disagree on? Yeah. What is that? Diego doesn't like avocado. But I've never liked it. It's not that I change my mind or anything. This is a 44-year thing. I don't like avocado. Uh, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say with that. I don't, I don't support that argument. Um, you, you, you love avocados. I, yeah, I think avocados should be president. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys, no, uh, no, no, for you. not thank telling you. us your secret and for <laughs> putting me in the spot. Thank you very much. Okay, Diego is in Star Wars and Gael is a part of Marvel. <laughs> Have you tried to get the other into your universe? <laughs> oh, that would be really weird. That would be really pushing it. No, that would be like... Not like going into hyperspace or anything. Exactly. Not, like, exactly. not, not so realistic. Imagine like, 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 hey, what, what are you doing here? Oh but God, you but now Spanish like... Also? Me too. I don't know, like a piece for like a Comedy Central kind of thing. We could, <laughs> yeah, we we could, could do, do something of... Or, or in 50 years when like... When, yeah, the, when no one calls us. Do something. Uh-huh. Yeah. We can be like wearing the clothes, <laughs> being really old and pretending yeah. like... Exactly. There was a moment where they actually... But they would be fighting together, no? They would uh, be... For the same cause? Uh -huh. Of course. Definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't think they will fight. I think Andor would try to get away. But Andor would bring his droid. Or That's the thing that uh, we have to acknowledge, that there's a gigantic thing that would get in between. Yeah, the werewolf. He's not responsible for his actions. Let's say he's like the, that friend that has really bad alcohol. <laughs> no, the next day he's like, what? What happened? So I don't know... Uh, Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> <laughs> was it obvious which role was, was meant for each of you on a machine? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. I am uh, I'm very open to injections. Uh, Gael is afraid of, uh, it's of needles. It's so <laughs> I, I was like, yeah, I'll play that. I'll take the hit. And Gael is good at taking hits also. <laughs> he likes being punched. He likes to suffer. He likes the pain. <laughs> and, and tight shorts. I mean, short shorts, not tight. Gael had been training boxing for years and I was happy not to wake up too early. So uh, I think it was pretty clear. I'll tell you everything about the fake bot. One of the first ideas we had is like, this guy was gonna be obsessed with having a bigger ass. As big as it would look natural to him. It's basically this padded pants that he, he wears. And it was quite fascinating to put put that on because it suddenly like it brings a character naturally like just makes you stand differently it's like I was like in fact a little like jealous to be fair it's like oh this is this is kind of nice <laughs> and it's right there's something about sitting down with with a like with an actual bot that is uh, is very comfortable that I miss now uh, but yeah I had to let go because the series is a mini series, so, so it has a beginning and an end. It's a character that uh, it's gone with his ass and, and all the prosthetics. Yeah. yeah. So Diego, what are you most excited for in Andor season two? You want me to answer that? <laughs> exactly, thank you. No, <laughs> if, if you can help me, I, I mean, I can't talk about it, but, uh, but you can talk about it. You don't, have, <laughs> you don't have a contract or anything. I am very excited. We've been working really hard. It's four years. Like the first season was one year. This one is four years in the life of these characters. And there's new characters. And uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's an exciting one, but I can't say much. You can't say much. I, I apologize, you know, but I can't okay. say much. But I, I can be back next year to talk about it. If if I don't know. if there's a chance, if, I don't know. It's I, mean, a, I can bring my own chair if this one is still like this. I think you will have to. Yeah, yeah, because this chair is still gonna be here. Ah. Why was it important to you both to tell the story in La Máquina? It was important for many reasons. I think the most important one was to have an opportunity to 
reflect on friendship, but with characters uh, our age, you know, because it changes a lot. And we had the opportunity to do something similar in Itumama Tambien, in Rudy Cursi. And for me, it was important to keep reflecting on something that unites us, you know, and, uh, and do that. Well, we still have time to, to talk about this moment, you know. People have been waiting for years to see you two back together on screen. What drew you both to reunite for La Máquina? It was definitely uh, the love for what we do, the idea of acting together again after so many years, uh, which is so much fun. It's, it's just like there's something very special when we work together and we wanted to make sure we went through that again. We also wanted to make sure we could do a, a story that would celebrate Mexico, that would celebrate boxing and friendship, and that would give us the opportunity to work with an amazing group of people that we've been working with for decades now. How did Itumama Tambien push the boundaries of cinema? Do we agree that uh, Itumama Tambien pushed boundaries of <laughs> cinema? <laughs> I think we can agree, especially in those days. The fact that this very fresh story that is a comedy but at the same time it's a, it's a tragedy and that it has those elements of um, awakening and the loss of innocence and all of those combined with, uh, with uh, the fact that, that it was a map that very few people had seen in the, in the world. I mean, and also for us, it was very difficult to reflect on all this because we hadn't made those type of films. And obviously the sexuality, which we... Oh, I thought you were more. gonna say the great acting. Sensuality. No. It is the great acting. <laughs> <laughs> when film is honest and has a purpose, there's always someone out there yeah that will be ready to receive that and, and make it theirs, no? What was it like working with Alejandro on Amores Perros? And how did it influence you as an actor? Well, I mean, it was my first experience in cinema. Also, it was Alejandro González Signarito first experience in cinema. I'm doing that voice because yeah. he talks a little bit like that. <laughs> It was many of us in that film, it was our first experience working on cinema and, uh, and back in those days we didn't know that the films were going to be seen. There were only six films done that year in Mexico. Now reflecting back on it, we knew what we were, the story we were telling, but we didn't know the consequences at all. Having that opportunity to always remember that innocence in a way or that instinct. Back in those days we didn't have any references if this was the correct thing, the right thing to do and it came out. What advice would you give to the next generation of Latino storytellers? The advice I would give is to behave badly. Rebel on the, on your, on the established narrative mm. and, uh, and break it. If we fall into the trap of like, this is the stories that we are able to tell, then I don't know, it's not interesting. I would also add, make sure you see the projects that kind of like represent that, you know, be curious about what others are doing and how they're doing it. We, we send a message every time we buy a ticket for a theater play, we watch a film, we click on a platform, make sure you're sending the message, the right message, you know, and you connect with those who are being rebellious, independent, uh, brave enough to, to tell stories, you know. Thank you so much for watching and thank you Esquire for making our answers sound logical and, uh, and, and make brief. it sense and brief, yes. Exactly. Please edit this uh, brief. Thank you very much for, you. for watching this. <laughs>